It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where representatives from the AFC and NFC will square off. It's the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at what's now known as Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gunn with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So the commanders make their way out on offense for the first time here, and it's the rookie, Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick, leading the way. And he was the number two overall pick in the draft because he is special. A dual threat athlete in the quarterback position, Beats you with his arm and his legs and runs the ball better than any quarterback since maybe Lamar Jackson came out of Louisville. But with that being said, he's got to be smart about how he runs the football. He puts himself in position to take some big shots. He's got to be on the field and available for him and his team to be successful. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. And that's complete to McCaffrey. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Call it a gain of three on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Robinson will try to pick it up. And some room to work. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Back to Robinson now on first down. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's about it. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Third down and 10. To throw is Daniels. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Now the Bengals make their way out on offense for the first time, led by their fifth-year quarterback out of LSU, Joe Burrow.
So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Now the first carry for Zach Moss. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, both teams practice this situation, and this time the guys on offense won, and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage, or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. Seven yards there at a first down. Nice hands displayed there by the former Penn State standout. And he's certainly hoping to get back on track now that he's playing in a Bengals offense that better suits his skill set. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they take the flag and the yardage that comes with it. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Now Burrow. Got a man open. It's Chase. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. The Bengals bring out their punter now. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Here's Daniels. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Second and ten. Play action. Now it's Daniels. He completes this one to Terry McLaurin. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A gain there of 30 big ones. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he gets it down to the 32. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner is giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. 
This one caught by Crowder. First time that they've called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Throwing now is Daniels. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. Here we go now on first and goal. Working out of the gun, Daniels. Flush to his right. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Jaden Daniels, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. I'm pretty sure that that was a passing play, but he took off pretty quickly and ran with it. Love his decisiveness on it because you're exactly right. He was supposed to go back in the pocket and survey the field and throw the football. But when that hole opened, he just said, forget it, let's go. And boy, did that work out well. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. And the kick is good, and the Commanders out to a 7-0 lead. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Here's second and three. Burrow will throw. And he'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Burrow to his old LSU teammate Chase for a Bengal first. Well, he's been a busy man in this first half. They've targeted him quite a bit, including both plays here to start this drive. And until that defense starts reacting a little better, they may just keep going back to him. Play action. It's Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Here look to Gesicki on the out route. Ball is caught. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
11 more on that one and another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Throwing for Chase on the crosser. He's got it. That's good. The completion there for seven yards at its second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. They'll run out of the gun with Moss. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Now it's Burrow. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. Zach Taylor, a new breed of head coach. He's going to go for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for it with Brown. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. From the three, second and a yard. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Joe Burrow, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A 10-play drive that time, and it was Joe Burrow who took it himself for the touchdown run. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Throwing now is Daniels. And that is incomplete. 
And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Daniels from the gun on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. And Washington with a football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Robinson up the middle. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. To throw is Daniels. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield, but as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. There's Robinson showing the flash. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 38 now, here's a second and four. Throwing now is Daniels to the right side and caught by Senate. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. Third and seven now. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. To the air goes Daniels. A good decision in the end. The pull it and run gets him nine yards and a first. With nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble. And a nice job, CD. Got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team game over personal protection. To throw is Daniels. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and eight. Now Daniels. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Anytime a ball is thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. In search of eight yards on third down, they've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Daniels looking to throw. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Oh, man. Just when the D thought they had the answer for him, he went and changed the question. Surprises him by taking off himself. He's able to set up his offense pretty with a first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Goal. 
They'll run with Robinson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. A loss of two there, second down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Robinson. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. It's a pickup of three, but still a little work to do on third and goal. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line, because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin from six yards away. And Washington has taken the lead. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? Cybert on for the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it's finished off by a Terry McLaurin touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Now a second and ten. Burrow looking to pass. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Burrow hooking up with Higgins for a Bengal first down. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. Play action. It's Burrow. Over the middle. That's caught by Chase. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one-yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over his next few plays. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Now it's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. 
Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Now Burrow. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Partner, normally double coverage is reserved for receivers and tight ends, but this time they actually targeted the running back with it, and it still wasn't enough. He attacked the defense and got in a great position to haul in the catch and get a nice gain out of it. From the gun on third down is Burrow. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Jamar Chase, 41 yards. And the Bengals are an extra point away from evening this one up. Now he's tough to contain as it is, but in man coverage with a pretty deep pass downfield, really tough to contain. And it's so difficult because every play, you've got to consider he might try and run past you. So your goal as a defensive back is to give him plenty of cushion, meaning lots of space between you and him. If he wants to catch the short stuff, come up and secure the tackle, hit him a bunch during the game, and try and keep him in front. But if you turn your head for a second, if your concentration wanes, bye -bye. he just takes off and goes. And I think that's what we just saw there. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. This pass finds McCaffrey going across the middle. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. 23 yards on the play. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. False start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. In motion goes McCaffrey. Here's Daniels. This to McLaurin out on the left side. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. The offense on third down tonight, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. This time they face a third and two. 
Now we got whistles before the snap. Looked like one of the commanders jumped. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The rookie from LSU leading this offense well. A good throw there leads to a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. to the air goes Daniels and he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown Zach Ertz a 24 yard touchdown and Washington has taken the lead as a general rule quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped but in this case based on the matchup he thought he was going to get it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Here's Cyber now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Zach Ertz touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Bengals offense and Jamar Chase set to take over once more. And it may be time for this defense to start throwing a second defender his way because whatever they've done, it has not worked in this first half. The Bengals drive about to get going. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Now the Bengals are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now it's Burrow. Jones has it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Open man is chase complete. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one.
Second down and a little more than a yard here. Here's Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 17-yard line. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. To the air again, Burrow. Escaping, the, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Deron Payne. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses having their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that'll bring them back within four. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's when your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Four seconds, all that remain here this first half as the kick gets away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Both of these offenses had their share of high points in that first half. Each team had some big moments. And it would seem this could turn out to be a game where the last score wins. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Bengals offense and Joe Burrow getting set for this next drive. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now.
Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Brown with a stick skills. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation. One that they have a much better chance of picking up. They'll come up facing third and five. Now it's Burrow. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Good coverage there. Holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. The Commanders offense and Jaden Daniels getting set for this next possession. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Working out of the gun, Daniels. That's to McCaffrey, complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Here's third and ten. Now Daniels. Oh, what a read on the outside as it's intercepted. Well, it certainly felt like he was going to challenge this defense no matter what, and he stepped up and tried to throw it to the outermost edge of the zone coverage, and they were more than ready for him. The problem now is if they are limited in what they're doing throwing the football, they got to figure out how to move it without being able to throw it to the outside and throw it downfield. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they'll take over here following the interception with good field position and a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go play action with Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. Moss. Is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. 
So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Moss once more. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Zach Moss, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals have taken the lead here in this third quarter. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And fighting down inside the 25. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys with much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. To the air goes Daniels. And this is caught. It's Brown. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot <laughs> cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. And he's got McCaffrey open, complete. Well, as a lineman, they are trained. You've got to stay close to home. If you're more than a yard downfield, they're going to toss that flag, and they did there. Play action. Now it's Daniels. This will be caught once again by Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards the pick up there. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 47. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence 
to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Tressway now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Bengals offense and Jamar Chase set to take over once more. And you see the numbers for him into this third quarter. They just pop off the screen. He has been open throughout. The Bengals drive about to get going. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. Oh, he breaks a tackle and he's got an alley. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just saw receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. Here's Burrow. He'll find Jones again, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the 33, here's second and four. Now it's Burrow. Got a man open, it's Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll take this down to the 26. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. And they'll accept that penalty. Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. That will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. Now that run, that's exactly why you stay with the running game. You don't abandon it totally. You stick with it, keep telling your guys to stay motivated, and they found a crease on that play. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here's Burrow. He finds his man complete. It's Hudson. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it's second down. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. 
Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase with his second touchdown of the night. And the Bengals had six to their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is lets you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Washington offense set to take over. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Clock showing 90 seconds to go in the third. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. Toward the sideline, intercepted. Daxton Hill picks it off. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Now it's Burrow. And this will be incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. Burrow will throw. Now a short one to Gesicki. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Seven catches for him now in this last one, the first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Facing a second and three, ball on the 10. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Now Burrow. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. 
Joe Burrow spotting T. Higgins for the touchdown there. And the Bengals are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. An important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the map there, and at this point in the fourth quarter, look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them, but we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. And McPherson on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Unable to corral him, he fights through. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Commanders preparing for their next possession. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. His throw incomplete. Here's second and ten. Now Daniels. On the catch, it's Crowder. And they'll get to him right away at the 40. It'll go as a pickup of 14 and a Washington first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout. And all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and two. To throw is Daniels. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 38-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but... Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now Daniels. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Here's Daniels. And that is dropped. Oh, that could have been a near certain six points. He was all alone, but he could not look it in. My, oh, my. 
And this is a situation where as a head coach, you're just saying, what else could go wrong? Let's get it all out of our system, please. This has been a sloppy game throughout. The execution has been lacking. A lot of mistakes, both mental and physical. And here's a big play that goes by the wayside. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Washington goes for it, but it does not pan out. And the Bengals will get the football back. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard, but they've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives, and I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now... People continue to accelerate, but we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. They only need a yard here. Third down and one after the penalty. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. The commander's offense and Jaden Daniels getting set for this next possession. And it's been a rough night at the office for him. He's been more of a liability than an asset throughout the contest. And this offense is having a hard time overcoming his struggles to this point. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Finding space at the 40, and he'll get this all the way up to the 42-yard line. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, back door to him, and that time worked well for a solid game. To throw is Daniels. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Now a second and ten.
From the shotgun, it's Daniels. Middle of the field, he's got McLaurin. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 33. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Daniels looking to throw. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second down and four. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. Finding Ertz again. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And a little bit of space there, takes it inside the five to the three. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you a little bit surprising. But they wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. Nice job holding them out of the end zone on third down. I think you need to give a big assist to this crowd. Yeah, they're really rallying them, aren't they? They're behind them the whole way. And they get that little bit of extra motivation when you're in a tough situation. Let's see what happens here on fourth down if they go for it. Can the crowd help them one more time? They'll run for it with Robinson. And he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Brian Robinson, Jr. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by the touchdown run from Brian Robinson. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. The Bengals offense and Joe Burrow getting set for this next drive. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes a right read seemingly every time.
The Bengals drive about to get going. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Burrow looking to pass. That's complete once again. It's Kosicki. The result only four yards there on the play. And that'll leave them with a third and two. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. The offense on third down tonight, three for seven so far in this game. Here it's third and two. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. The LSU connection, Burrow to chase for the Cincinnati first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. It doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He finds his man complete. It's Hudson. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Two yards still to go, third down now. Now it's Burrow. They're able to find the open man, that's complete. Now Washington gonna use the second of their three timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And he will have a Bengals first down. And it's celebration time on that sideline. And they've earned it. And we'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Moss. Will take this one in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. 
You're in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. McPherson on for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Washington offense back out there. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Working out of the gun, Daniels. Looking for the out route, and he's got it. It's complete to McCaffrey. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of... And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review And this being inside two minutes of play. Everything coming from up above. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Daniels looking to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Here's second and 10. Here's Daniels. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now Daniels. That is caught. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 35. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. He's going deep for Brown. And this is taken in for a Washington touchdown. Deami Brown, 35 yards. And the commanders get a bit closer. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. 
Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. Five plays there on that drive. And it's Deami Brown who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the Bengals' hands team. And they're going to hang on and win this game. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Burrow down to a knee, and that should be the final act of this one. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out.